Today, we will check out the new AI tool by Runway, which allows us to do a 3D capture of basically everything that we would like to film and to have it later in 3D space. With this new technique, we will be able to do photogrammetry in a much faster way than before, where we had to do hundreds of photos of a model to then edit it in multiple softwares to make it usable in 3D. Let's see what the new beta software 3D Capture from OneRay offers us and where we reach our limits in the early state of AI video making. Alright, so actually the first thing we need to do once we are on the uh, runway site again is to log in. Once you have done that, the main page will open. Here you can see on the left side under More and 3D that here's a chapter where we can click on. Once you clicked on it, we see a new site with 3D generations. Click here on 3D Capture. Once we reach 3D Capture, we can see here example uh, projects from other uh, users on the site, which did that already. And what we want to do now is creating this kind of same effect for what we filmed. I did this as an example scene already where I filmed something which I will show you in a second. First of all we go to on the top right corner to create new. Once we are here we can now drag and drop our video but we didn't film the video and don't have it yet so I will show this in a second just stay with me. We can see here the guidelines which describe the guidelines which we need to do when you film the video itself. We can click on here and see okay we need one video is at knee level, one video where we go around the object and go on chest level and one object where we uh, have the camera above head. So three different perspectives in total which we can then use to uh, merge them together in the end. So I'm now in Adobe Premiere to show you what I filmed so far. So near my workplace, I have this amazing statue found, which is carrying kind of a cube or stone. Let's say it like this. And uh, yeah, it's, sometime, it's some historic figure. So I thought like, hey, maybe this is a good example. Basically, I just did uh, what was described. So I have one shot where I'm going around and having it on medium level, one where I have it above and another video I film from down below. So looking at the guidelines, actually, we need to take care of a few things. So we need to have it actually in 30 seconds or longer, the whole video, one to three minutes is perfect for this. Another thing is we need to disable HDR in our phone settings. And then as well, we need to choose the camera settings that have a high FPS. So I filmed uh, this one with actually 60 FPS. As well, we need uh, to move the camera slowly to reduce blur. Um, this is what I did in my case, maybe a bit too fast, even though it's uh, not too fast at all, but it could be maybe even a bit slower so the AI can calculate it uh, later better. So um, yeah, especially on the last videos, it's a bit faster. But uh, yeah, I tried my best here to keep it as slow as possible. So also take care of that. And otherwise it just says normal and wide lens videos are accepted on this. Once we have that, I just drag them all in Premiere Pro to cut them together. A good tip is also, I'm not sure about this, but uh, I think another good tip is to just do that in one row. Oh, this is maybe difficult because then you have to repeat it a few times, but actually um, this could also help to have it uncompressed in the end. Because what I did here to have it not in a huge, huge file size as a test, I just exported it here through um, it, uh, uh, Premiere because I needed this one video together. So we go to File, Export, and then to Media. Okay, we can just select what we want. I just kept it at high quality, quality um, 4K because I shot it in 1K, 4K on my phone, on my iPhone. H.264 as a codec. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I, I leave it, left it like this and I used 60 FPS in total. Click here and then you can export it. Once you have the video, you can then go back to the page and then just drag our video, which we have here, to the field. And then it will firstly, depending on your internet connection, load a little bit. This can take a while, 
but afterwards once it's loaded we can uh, have a bit of a preview and then generate it okay cool so now when we have uploaded our video we can just display it and look if everything looks uh, correct so far from first view so this is fine for me and then only thing we need to do is name it we can uh, name a statue example as a test and then we can just uh, say the model type I will keep that at nerf and then we can just say next uh, train 3d capture click on it and uh, yeah first of all you see nothing but then you can see okay your captures are here and runway will already display it for you and you can see okay it's at zero percent don't wonder this can take up to many hours. Um, last time I waited like three to four hours. So we have to deal with that um, at that point of time. So uh, don't wonder, but you will get an email uh, from Runway once it's finished and then you can have a look at it. All right, so we are actually back and now um, we finally have our capture here on the side, which you can see down here, your captures. So we can now click on it and then it's loading the mesh. And we already see that we just have a rough preview now, but once we wait a little bit, it will render what we have. And this is like the preview frame we have of the image. Um, we can see, we can also navigate here with the, um, with the mouse wheel and can see okay like like our scan like our photogrammetry scan and i think in overall it did a pretty decent job in like you know seeing the structures and everything especially when we load it and then we see it even more i mean here it's not very blurry because we zoomed out too much but once we go closer you can see like here and we, when we let it load that that it uh, did this quite well uh, only thing which I'm a bit disappointed is that it's quite blurry but this could also be my mistake that I w went too fast when I filmed um, yeah around the object or that uh, because I didn't do it uncompressed this, because this would have taken me hours to upload. And so yeah, one of those. Um, if you test it on your side, please let me know if you <laughs> uh, got any better results of it. Um, would be really interested in that. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll take a look um, again here and make another video in a few months maybe when it's improved and it's not better anymore. So maybe in the final version, it, it then delivers better results. Anyways, we have now this nice, um, yeah, lighter scan thingy when also when you do a photogrammetry. And I mean, we have the uh, basic structure, which is quite nice. What we could do now is also to download our mesh and then take it into Blender, for example, to have it in a 3D program. So you can just click here and we can download the mesh, which we do it now. And then you can see it over here. We open it here. We have uh, the OBJ file and the image itself. And now we can go into Blender, for example. So, um, and then just open a new file, delete the cube, and then import here OBJ. And then here we can go to downloads where I saved it right now, and then just select the OBJ. This will take then a while because it has to load all the um, information, which is quite a lot. All right, so now it's uh, once it's loaded, we can then view it and we see, okay, cool, we have it now in our. 3D view as well and can do a lot of things with it. We could also use it as a scale reference, which is quite nice. Of course, when we place a cube now, we can see the cube is way too large, but then we can simply go to the to the model and say, and upscale it by a factor of 100. And then we can see, okay, now it uh, matches already better. Let's try 10 as well. Okay, so we see, okay, 10 would be most likely the scale, otherwise we can also scale it a bit better. But once you place, for example, a 3D human here, we can then do it exactly, and then you see, okay, what is the correlation height from the block to the uh, statue and stuff like this, and also in the back. So last thing we want to do is give this thing a shader. How we can do that is um, we just open here a new window, 
and then navigate to our shader editor we see it also has a material when you have a random material here you can also just delete it and then click on new and then we see it's assigned to the mesh and what we can do now is just drag our image file that was also downloaded uh, and attached when we downloaded it from one ray and then we can simply plug it in so when we plug it in here for example we can then see when we go to rendering mode that we have it then and yeah this is kind of the result we could also just plug it into an emission shader and um, yeah we see we have all the colors attached of course it's not the best quality like i mentioned before and this needs to be improved by further versions but i think it's a nice view to see when you really want to do fast photogrammetry and um, don't want to shoot like 100 images around it then we can simply do it this way because this was now much much faster it took like i think one minute or two minutes to film it and that was it so please try it out yourself and let me know if you get better results than me <laughs> um, because this is the yeah a bit clunky but uh, I'm excited for what you coming up with it and I will further test it and maybe make a future video where I test it when it's out of the better version. So <clears throat> yeah, let me know and uh, have a great day.